Mr. B here. Finding the unknown oxidation number of an element in a compound can be quite simple. In this video, I will demonstrate the best technique to use to find the oxidation number of any element in any compound. Let's begin with a simple compound known as sodium chloride. If you look on your periodic table, every group one element will have a plus oxidation state in the element box. This means that for any element found in group one, with the exception of hydrogen, the oxidation number will be a plus one. Since all molecules have overall oxidation states of zero, the chloride must have an oxidation number that is minus one. When a halogen combines with the metal, that halogen will always have an oxidation state of minus one. Consider the compound sodium chlorate. As we said before, all group one ions will have a plus one oxidation state. Oxygen, except when in a compound known as a peroxide, will always have a minus two oxidation state. Simply adding up our oxidation numbers will now tell us which oxidation state the chloride will have. In this case, three times minus two gives a minus six. One times plus one gives a plus one. The net charge must be zero. Therefore, in this situation, chlorine will have a plus five oxidation state. These oxidation states may be confirmed by finding the elements on the periodic table for the nonmetals in terms of chlorine. Chlorine should have a plus five oxidation number on the periodic table. Now let's look at the compound sodium chlorite. Sodium chlorite contains one sodium, one chlorine, and two oxygens. Any element found in group one will have a plus one oxidation state, except for hydrogen, which can be plus one, or when combined in a compound known as a hydride with a metal, will have a minus one. Oxygen will have a minus two oxidation state with the exception of peroxide compounds. Two times minus two is minus four. One times plus one is plus one. So in this situation, our chlorine will have a plus three oxidation number. Plus one, plus three, gives plus four. Plus a minus four, gives an overall oxidation state of zero. All compounds wish to achieve a zero oxidation state. Now let's find the oxidation number of manganese in a compound called potassium permanganate. Potassium, once again, is a group one ion. Therefore, 
potassium will have a plus one oxidation on The oxide will have a minus two oxidation on Four times minus two is minus eight. Plus one, therefore in this case, x is equal to plus seven. Plus one, plus seven, plus or minus eight gives me an overall charge of zero. To find the oxidation number of elements in polyatomic ions, we must deviate a slight bit from our previous examples. In this case, the sulfate ion has a net charge of minus two. When finding the unknown oxidation number, in other words, when finding the oxidation number of sulfur in this compound, we must always remember that the net charge is minus two. Okay, this is how you do it. Four times minus, four times minus two for the oxygen. Oxygen has a minus two oxidation state. Four times minus two is minus eight. The net charge is minus two. So therefore, in this situation, the sulfur must have a plus six oxidation number. Checking your periodic table will confirm that plus six is indeed one of sulfur's oxidation states. Look at a compound that has a negative hydrogen ion. This compound is known as potassium hydride. Hydrides are compounds that contain hydrogens with negative oxidation states. In this case, once again, potassium, one of the group one metals, will have a plus one charge. The net charge will be zero. So in this particular situation, hydrogen will have a minus one charge.